So I recently finished Lauren Southern's new video, The Whole Truth, in which she does a tell-all about the people she worked with, and for, and all of the drama therein. And most people's focus is on the drama, which is, you know, right for her, because that's what her story is, and right for the people watching who like that sort of thing. However, I think there's a much darker story within what she told, and I kind of feel bad about it being buried within the three-hour video she made, so I thought I'd make this little response just to highlight the most egregious aspect therein, which is the state working with lobbying groups to shut down her and people who think like her, because we're meant to be in a free country, I would have thought. However, you may not know who Lauren Southern is and stumbled across this, so just in case, Lauren Southern was a anti-SJW political activist at the start of her career, making these wonderful videos in which she would go down and expose them at their protests or meetings, where else, uh, and they would be nuts. Then she went on to become a documentary filmmaker, which, again, was very good content. It was very informative, went to issues that no one else was talking about, and first-hand accounts, especially of the one Borderless, in which she showed off the European migrant crisis, was very good. And again, nothing extreme, just showing the reality on the ground how things are. And then all of a sudden she just disappeared from politics and resigned, which was a confusing for a lot of people, myself included, and I suppose, and she says, that is what the tell-all is about, letting people know what happened. And the big thing that stopped her was the Australian government. And those details are buried within the three hour long video, so I thought I'd take them out and we'd uh, highlight them. However, the other content, you know, maybe good tea and all, but uh, I'm not that interested in that sort of thing. I want to instead talk about the bigger story within. Lauren mentions two things. First, that she was banned from the UK and the United States and Australia. She could not get visas to these places even just to visit because of her political activism. And the Australian government gave her an ultimatum that they would only let her visit and then engage with her family again if she gave up her political activism as a Canadian. Because of everything I had done in politics, because of all the activism I had done, South Africa, borderless, all of it, I had been put on a list called vacuum. It is typically for criminals and terrorists that can't travel to other countries because they've got a record that won't allow them to enter other countries. And I had been put on that list due to my political activism. And it meant that I couldn't get a visa to go to Australia. And I had been advised the only way that I was going to be able to see my family, grandparents of my child, was if I quit politics altogether. And that's what I did. Right after Borderless came out, published, I'm leaving, I'm quitting. Just a nice little letter I emailed out to people and said goodbye. Said I wanted to focus on family. I didn't talk about why. I didn't tell anyone about the Australia vacu stuff because that would probably jeopardize my visa too. I couldn't publicly discuss, you know, the, those government affairs and problems. And I was lucky enough that right after I published that letter, I did get a response that said, your visa has been accepted. You're allowed to visit the country now, but it's on the one stipulation that you have quit politics and you will never, you will never violate any of our character assessment standards again. I kind of wanted quitting to be on my own terms, which made me sad because it wasn't on my terms. It wasn't really on my terms. It was on the government's terms. I, I definitely feel like the end of my political career was stolen from me by that. <laughs> Sorry. It's really nice to tell people what actually happened. She also mentions that a lobbying group by the name of Hope Not Hate tried to intimidate her and then successfully intimidated her staff into working with them to take down people on the right, I suppose we'll use. And they did this by using the threat of state power and were obviously working with the state given that they had medical records and such of the people working for her. We got into a yelling match over political disagreements and stormed out of the pub after an hour. Never met with them again. Never again. We had that one meeting. Kaylin and George then tell me, like, listen, Lauren, we have to go meet with them. We have to try to smooth things over. We're terrified. We're not going to be able to travel anymore. We're going to go to jail. We don't know how we're going to smooth it over, but there is absolutely no way we're going to compromise you. There's no way we're going to compromise Tommy. They're all gearing up to say, if we take down those boys, then the Tommy Rockets are never happen again. Joe said there was, a, there was a meeting that took place recently where they had three files in the Everything you could possibly imagine, shit from when I was like 10 years old from another country. And they had all these files and they were like, 
the hammer has to fall on, on, on one of these people and who allowed this to happen. It's like they're literally sitting there with the files and a hammer going. Yeah, like um, that's how fucking serious it is. And I'm to, not to, to a point where if we carried on with Tommy, say he didn't go to prison and we carried on with him for another three months, we would probably be in prison by Christmas. And you might wonder who the hell are Hope Not Hate? Well, they're a lobbying group. They're a lobbying group who advertise themselves as documenting hate or keeping tracks on the far right and such to combat extremism. Very much like the Southern Poverty Law Center in the United States advertises themselves. The reality, of course, is that because of their progressive agenda in the Southern Poverty Law Center, they're wildly inaccurate and have to retract things. And even Twitter has admitted to not using them anymore because of that problem. And hope not hate are no different in the agenda aspect. However, they are for some reason taken very seriously by the British government and others. Very regularly they're called to give evidence on new bills that are being proposed, such as the online harms bill, in which they were brought in to give evidence about why legal but harmful speech should be banned. No liberal would ever agree to this, obviously. But they're not liberals. In case you were wondering, we can prove that as well. Their head of research, Matthew Collins, is a member of the Communist Party of Great Britain. Here is his post on Hope Not Hate's website, showing that he works for them, and here is his Facebook page. And I'm just going to put on screen all the different posts from him, in which, number one, he admits it. You can see that the Facebook account is directly tied to Hope Not Hate because of its years of posting about their content. And unless there is another Matthew Collins working for them who isn't mentioned on the website, that's him. And he also keeps a low profile. The only video I could find of him that's public is him talking about how he left the National Front. My name's Matthew Collins. I'm the head of intelligence or research at Hope Not Hate. I'm a former member of the National Front. And then became a member of the Communist Party. And this shows de-radicalization. Which is why you should take them seriously on how to de-radicalize. Do you understand why this is ridiculous? And to most conservatives in this country, people have realized that this is a communist organization. Don't talk to them. Don't take them seriously. Who the hell cares what communists think? However, the British government, not so much, as previously mentioned. You may wonder where the hell an organization like this would get its funding. And no surprise if you look back at some of the groups that have given them money over the years. Hundreds of thousands of dollars have come from George Soros. I mean, I know it's a meme, but it's a meme for a real reason, and it's because it's true. However, that's their money. They want to waste it on lobbying groups that spend their time trying to destroy reasonable people like Southern. Fine, I guess. You can use your money to do that as long as you stay within the permits of the law. But that's not all that happens. They also get money from the British state. And this is where I want to make a distinction. There's elected politics, you know, people who are held to account and the democracy in which we supposedly live, in which people are elected to parliament, ministers, MPs, councillors, activists, so forth, these people largely understand that this lobbying group is not legitimate. However, then there is the British state, which is not accountable, not elected, and are supposed to be held account by the elected representatives. However, they seemingly routinely fight against the voters' wishes, such as the fact that the Taxpayers Alliance digged up that the British government provided £7.7 .7 million in funding to groups to fight the Conservative Party's own efforts to combat illegal immigration. And Hope Not Hate was one of those recipients, according to the Taxpayers' Alliance. So what have you got here? You've got obvious corruption in a lobbying group that shouldn't be given my money to campaign against political ideologies that they just happen to dislike because they're communists. But back to Lauren Southern, because Lauren's staff used to work for a man named Tommy Robinson, the evil bad man who... Uh, probably going to refer to as the bad man throughout now on because he is uh his name is toxic on social media as in the social media sites really don't like him existing he's a man who spent his entire career upsetting the british state by exposing the grooming gangs and other problems with integration of islamic communities take place throughout the united kingdom and the british state does not deal with them in any reasonable manner this got so bad apparently according to him they tried to recruit him in fact, he mentions that the Metropolitan Intelligence Bureau offered him essentially £125,000 to lead the English Defence League on their behalf. He apparently turned this down, which is uh, what you kind of expect from him. But it obviously paints a picture that him, and by extension his staff, are not exactly friends with the British state. 
And this is where it gets interesting. Because, of course, the bad man would have falling outs with his staff, and in which case, what would you do? Well, you try and recruit them. You try and get them on your side so you can destroy the bad man. And this happened with one Lucy Brown, who had a real bad falling out with him. They both hated each other. Lauren documents apparently why, but that's not the subject of this video. However, the organisation that contacted Lucy was Hope Not Hate, and they contacted her with the express reason that they wanted to destroy the bad man. But then it turned out that the BBC, an organisation that is funded by the Tele licence, were also working with Hope Not Hate, a lobbying group, which is obviously against their charter, to both take down the bad man. Lucy Brown decided she would team back up with the bad man to show this obvious corruption so decided to get hidden camera footage of them trying to concoct a story in which they could then use to take him down. Well, Hope Not Hate were pretty pissed off when they found out, so they sent her a message asking, after everything that he did to you, why would you team back up with him? And you can't be prouder of Lucy than the answer she gave, which is... And I thought, well, what Tommy did to me was probably up there as one of the worst things anyone's ever done to me. But what you've done and are doing to the people of this country, to our future, what you're doing to the media, to the counterintelligence lot, the police, they're in parliament with your books and scoffing your fat faces for the free cake off the back of the national action case. Some very questionable stuff in there too, Nick. I found some very questionable stuff in there too. So I don't know, I just thought, fuck it. You guys are worse. Tommy was very surprised when I made the suggestion. Very surprised indeed. And to think he still gets the credit after all these years. Robinson then released his own documentary, in which he showed the hidden footage and the fact that the BBC were concocting fake stories against him, and he did this outside of the BBC's office in Manchester, which was uh, very funny. It was all just such a mess. The way the BBC were behaving was incredibly unethical, blackmailing people to get subjects in their film, using Hope Not Hate and NGO to work with them. That's the reason it never went to air. And in the immediate response, he was removed from social media. You may remember his Facebook account being taken down, his Instagram, the uh, YouTube channel. It's just gone. I mean, you can, you can try and find it. Good luck. I mean, it is there, but it's buried. Like, you just can't search the title and find it. That's not a thing you can do anymore. And the reason for that, given by Facebook, was that he, quote, put up a post calling for the beheading of Muslims. This obviously isn't true. He would be in jail if he did in the UK. And they had to admit that later on. However, he still remains banned because... Well, why exactly? Well, they don't like his political opinions. According to Lauren, Hope Not Hate also went after George and Kalen, who used to work for the bad man and now worked for Lauren. And they threatened them with state powers that they wouldn't be able to fly anymore, they would be put on a terrorist watch list and be considered by terrorists by the British government if they didn't go down and work with a lobbying group, again, who shouldn't have any ounce of power, never mind what they're displaying, and they prove this to the two uh, employees by showing them huge folders full of everything that had happened in their life, including their medical records, which they shouldn't have. Kaylin looks at me and, and says something that really took me back. He said, Lauren, I, I need to go back to London. I say, London? We're in the middle of filming. What, what, the, what the fuck are you talking about, Kaylin? He says, I need to go meet with Hope Not Hate. Obviously, I'm very taken aback. If you don't know who the group Hope Not Hate is, I of course do, because I've had many run-ins with them. One, they got me banned from Britain, and they got my Patreon account taken down by lobbying the organization. Not great guys, ruined many lives of people I enjoyed, and my own. So I'm like, Kaylin, why do you have to meet with Hope Not Hate? What is going on here? He tells me this organization are blackmailing him, essentially. They are threatening both him and George with jail time, saying they're speaking to the British police, saying they're talking with intelligence agencies, that they've connected Kalen and George with multiple radical events, including the Day for Freedom. They've connected them with the rise of hatred in London and the UK due to working with Tommy Robinson and making work for me. And that they're going to use all this information to get them jailed, questioned, put on lists so that they can't travel anymore, unless they come and speak to the group and give them information. And because they're non-government, they can get up to all sort of nefarious stuff. I absolutely believe Kaylin and George and still do to this day that they were being threatened. I absolutely believe that. They have to They basically just want to know that we're not doing anything. We're not. If you meet with yeah. Joe, be so careful about what you say. It's a shame. Unfortunately, all they really care about is that we're not organizing the extreme protests. They said that we were behind everything. 
was then banned from the United Kingdom for saying Allah is gay. Because, you know, it's basically a terrorist threat. You know, it's like ISIS. Like, they also post just memes. That's, that's the extent of what they do. Okay. I'm taking offence what people are saying to me It constitutes here. a public order offence, okay, and I cannot allow you to display these out here. Okay, people are coming up to us and telling us that it's offensive, and we're potentially going to have a situation on our hands, okay, where people are going to start becoming injured, okay. People are going to get injured. Because people are taking offence to what you're saying. She also got banned from the United States for two years. She doesn't go into detail, but I'm sure we'd all love to know why. And then she mentioned she got banned from Australia, in which her family were residing. So that's when she was given the ultimatum, delete everything, stop being a political activist, or you will never going to go see members of your family again. So obviously, she decided to give up. And this, I think, is the real story within all of that video, and why I wanted to take it out so everyone can see. Because we have the state working with a communist lobbying group to destroy the lives of political activists because... They don't like their opinions. That's not how a free country is meant to work. Especially when you consider the fact that the people orchestrating all of this don't seem to even be any of the elected representatives. This is entirely unelected bureaucrats just deciding what opinions should be allowed to be expressed within the United Kingdom and the rest of the Anglosphere, it seems. I thought it'd be the right thing just to take a moment and compare the two sides in this story. What would they give as advice to government ministers if they ever got that kind of influence? Well, you have Lauren and the bad man and co, their advice would probably be lower immigration, maybe drastically from Muslim countries, because they're worried about the integration of those communities. Okay. Radical policies. And what would Hope Not Hate do if they had that kind of influence? Well, that's a bit easier, because they do have that influence. And they've done three things. They've turned policing into a system of ideological suppression. They've turned the immigration system into a tool of ideological suppression. And they've turned the public broadcaster into a tool of ideological suppression. And the police, immigration, and the BBC are all engaging this, even though they're not allowed to, and they all get to do it with my and your money, taxpayers' money. Clearly because they have been poisoned by the same ideology that roots itself in lobbying groups like Hope Not Hate. And there's just one more aspect I wanted to talk about in regards to that story, which is that in Eastern despotic regimes, the oppression is naked. We see the people disappeared, or the journalists arrested, or their lives ruined, and everyone knows the system they live in isn't free. It's honest. Even if it's horrible. Whereas in the UK, we tell ourselves that it's a free country, we have a marketplace of ideas, you can debate these ideas, and the best ones come to the top. However, that's obviously not true if this is what is taking place. If political activists cannot go out and do basic activism without having their lives ruined by the state because some random communists didn't like them, that's something that has to be fixed. Anyway, apparently the bad man is making his own expose in which he's going to expose Hope Not Hate. I don't know what's going to happen there, so that's up for him. I suppose we'll all see, if you're allowed to see it. However, that for me was the real story within that long video, and I wanted more people to see it, so that's why I made this. Anyway, if you'd like more from me, you can support me on Subscribestar. Otherwise, uh, hopefully the next video will be good. Hopefully soon. Can't promise anything.